literally one of the most fucking dog shit Twitter users I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme Court justices have to write twit longers about their decisions. <laughs> This is like a kid who gets given an assignment at school and they go totally overboard on it. Is that where the good faith wearing of a gimp suit comes in? Here's a question, right? Can you can you wear a gimp suit, shit yourself, have someone look at you and then come? <laughs> I'm fucking losing it over here. What? Decisions Riley's made in the course of this, which are motivated primarily by a financial or power incentive. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, um, I think, uh, you know, because I looked at this and I thought, why the, why is she blocked to me? Like, I've not interacted with her for ages. Um, obviously, I was I took the piss out of her and was very critical of her. But I haven't, like, um, you know, I even spoke out and said I thought it was wrong with people contacting the bar, you know? Um, this, I think, is her girlfriend also blocked me as well for some reason. <laughs> That's all it takes sometimes. <laughs> the potato fairy. The potato fairy also blocked me. Very, very tragic. Can I be honest with you, right? Can I be honest with you? Riley's probably wise to just block people on Twitter because she's literally one of the most fucking dog shit Twitter users I've ever seen in my entire life, okay? Oh, is that why? What, you think she's just blocked everyone that follows Doe? No, no, listen. Think about it, right? Think about it, right? Um, She literally cannot use Twitter for more than a few days without, having a, without absolutely fucking losing it, you know? She honestly can't use Twitter without fucking losing it, right? Do you remember the eat the rich thing? Do you remember the eat the rich thing? Like, um, there were some people that were being a bit out of order, right? There are some people that are taking it too far, no doubt about it, right? Um, but there was one where it was, um, oh, what's, you know that um, Black Red Guard? You know that, that is, Black, is it Black Red Guard? He's like a Maoist YouTuber. And someone had photoshopped his face to be like this like Joker-like smile, right? And someone had quote tweeted Riley's tweet just with that image. And she included it saying, look at all these people that want to eat me. Has anyone got a link to it? Honestly, it's so funny. Hon honestly, <laughs> it's, it's the funniest thing. It's so good. But um, I mean, I don't know. Like in all seriousness, right? If she wants to block people for the benefit of a Twitter experience, that's up to you know. I don't really care. I just, I just think some of it is funny. It's probably just, it's probably just like a block. It's probably just like a, a blockchain, like a you know. Oh yeah, where's the legal document? Oh come on, listen, we got, to, we got, to, we got to take some time to enjoy some of the best Riley Grace for a strong Twitter memes. Surely, blockchain. Riley's gone crypto. I don't have any of the links to hand. Where is the document about how she follows people? Is this, wait a second though, is this one of the meme ones or is this a real one? <laughs> Imagine writing a whole ass document about following someone on Twitter. Oh my God. I, yeah. Right, let's read it, okay? Let's read it. You ready? One of my main issues with online political discourse is that oftentimes people enter discussions with the pretense of good faith when they have a conflict of interest because they're primarily motivated by something other than a genuine desire to understand a certain subject matter. This can, this can make having conversation... Wait a second, hang on, wait. No, I need to wait. Before you get started, I've just got to do it. This is obligatory. Wow, that's a lot of words. Too bad I'm not reading them. <laughs> Oh my god. I love that video so much. Okay, anyway, we are actually going to read it though, okay? People extend your positions regardless of how responsive you are to their arguments or how much charitability you extend to their positions. I mean, that's that's true, okay? Listen, I'm not just going to dunk on it. I'm not just going to dunk on it for the sake of it, okay? I will. I, when I, when, if I see something that's true, I'll say it, right? It's, it's still ridiculous to write this out, but even so. When that happens, the conversations are no longer focused primarily on the relevant subject matters, but rather on exposing the culpable parties as bad faith actors. This seems to be why an online political discourse, while certain subject matters are regarded as important and generally valued in discussion, most drama seems to focus primarily on the public figures most involved in discussing that topic. Topics come and go, but there is an overarching focus on proving which figure is right or wrong, wins or loses a debate, and should or should not be trusted.
While this kind of discourse can easily make for popular content online, I believe it is not effective for people who want to engage in actual legislative advocacy. <laughs> You're on fucking Twitter, right? You're on fucking Twitter, okay? Like, I, I don't know if, like, legislative advocacy is really something that you can meaningfully push for on Twitter, really, in a, in a meaningful way. Honestly, I think we've seen, I think we've seen fairly repeatedly that um, the online advocacy of any sort of um, electoral or legislative uh, nature doesn't really seem to bring about results in the real world. One of the main lessons I've learned from working for federal and state congressional representatives. Okay, listen. Here's another thing as well, okay? This seems like a bit of a flex, all right? This seems like something of a flex, I'm not going to lie. This seems like a bit of a flex, yeah? I don't know. Does that does that come across as a flex to anyone else? That does a bit to me. Is that in order to pass legislation, you have to be able to respond to every objection and criticism that people raise against you. And if you want to ensure that legislation you pass is not overturned later, you cannot respond to objections relying only on rhetoric. You have to ensure that you are able to win all of the arguments supporting your legislation on the merits. Otherwise, even if we codify certain measures into law, they will still remain relevant political issues and could later be overturned under a different Congress. This is why I focus on providing evidence-based arguments and def for defending and advocating civil rights. That's fair enough. I, I like that. I believe having thorough and accurate understandings of the policies we advocate will lead to better legislative outcomes. Fair enough. So, going forward... It is the presupposition here that legislation is based on their merits and not just on whatever bullshit politicians are selling at any given time. Well, the thing is, in order to get legislation passed, it's not necessarily the case that you have to have the best arguments for it or anything like Isn't it just about political capital, generally? Isn't it about just like, you know, if you've got a bit of power, you can do what do whatever you do, you, you know, the nature of your... um, If you've got enough power, you can just railroad through whatever legislation you want, broadly speaking. If you control enough, if you control enough of the levers of the um, of government, like you know, convincing the electorate isn't necessarily what I'm saying is, convincing the electorate isn't necessarily what gets legislation passed. It's about convincing, like you know, members of your own party if you've got enough political power, or members of your own party, and maybe some members of other political parties if you need like bipartisan support or like. Um, cross cross party support for a particular piece of legislation to get through. Supreme Court justices have to write twit longers about their decisions. <laughs> Holy fucking shit! No, come on, this is fucking silly, right? I don't, I don't, I don't think that this. That I think this is take. Okay, I think this is a, is a little bit too fucking. Uh... Oh right, I thought you meant actual twit longers. Yeah, of course. I know they've got to write shit about it because this is just it's it's Twitter. Like this is like. This is like, um, you know, this is like a kid who gets given an assignment at school, right? And they go totally overboard on it because they want to be the fucking top pupil. So going forward, I'll, I will be trying to incentivize good faith discussion, which furthers up. <laughs> good faith discussion. Hmm, interesting. Which furthers our understand. Okay. <laughs> is that where the, hang on a sec. Is that where the good faith wearing of a gimp suit comes in? Is that, is that, is that related to that? Is that what that's about? Because I remember I remember Riley talking about the good faith wearing of a gimp suit. I'm just wondering if that has got something to do with the good faith discussion or not. Can you have a good faith discussion in a good faith wearing of a gimp suit? Can you Okay, here's a question, right? Can you can you wear a gimp suit, walk into public, shit yourself, have someone look at you and then come? Can you do that in a good faith way? Yes or no? That is what I need to understand, okay? While there is not a lot that I can do to incentivize this behavior, I'm going to follow only those who I believe contribute to political discussion in such a way that meaningfully furthers our understanding of relevant subjects and who care about creating a healthier space online. Okay, so what are the criteria? This is what we need to get to. What are the actual criteria? Okay, let's have a look. They're a member of my Discord <laughs> and have completed the verification process where they determine if they have an issue with any of my public stances. <laughs> I'm fucking losing it. I'm fucking losing it over here. What? If you, if I'm if I'm on Twitter, right, and I see someone post a meme that makes me go like this, huh, literally just go like that, huh? 
You know the little sound you make when you think something's funny, right? I'll follow. I'll probably follow you, okay? I'll probably follow you because I think it's funny. You don't have to fucking join my Discord and go through a verification process, okay? <laughs> Where I determine... Like, it sounds like a fucking court. Listen, the world isn't a courtroom, okay? I think this is Riley's biggest problem. Riley is under the impression that the entirety of the world is like a courtroom. I think I think she's um you know like one of those annoying students that's just learned they've learned a couple of things in classroom and they just start to apply it all the time. Do you know what I mean? They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, we need to have a we need to have a debate on our on our, on the nature of our disagreement before I can follow you. Order in the court. Order in the court. Plato's cave, but I've been locked inside a courtroom instead of a cave. Men's rear. Um, habeas corpus. Habeas corpus of the fifth degree. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yeah, get, getting into court is less complicated than getting to talk with her. Inviting your waitress to discuss dialectical materialism over why you shouldn't have to leave her a tip. <laughs> oh, my God. Listen, just to be clear as well, okay? I'm just having a bit of fun, all right? I obviously, I do genuinely wish Riley, like, the best in life. I, I hope, like, she managed to sort out whatever's going on because clearly there's some stuff going on. You know, I hope that she that she maybe reflects on some of the super shit she's done and, um, you know, maybe just apologises for a few of the things she's done. I don't want anyone to go and harass her. Obviously, that's not really what I do here. And, uh, yeah, I don't want anything that bad to happen to her. Um, but, th come on, this is just fucking absurdist. This is absurdist. This is fucking, like, I have to laugh at this. I can't not, how can I not laugh at this? I'm the jester of the piece, you know? Okay, no, point number two. Point number two, okay? They're a public figure with more than 1,000 followers on the relevant social media platforms, or I am reasonably convinced they will get more than 1,000 followers on the relevant social media platform. Do you have to like, do you have to plead your case? Do you have to plead your case? Do you have to plead your case to Riley? Well, here's the thing, Riley. Uh, I know I'm only to 700 followers at the moment, but I've, my meme release schedule, my, my meme release pipeline is, is looking pretty good at the moment. Um, I've got three certified bangers that are due to come out in the next few days. Um, and further to that, um, I'm going to be doing a Twitter space. I'm going to be doing a Twitter space. <laughs> <laughs> on usage of the n-word whether that's acceptable in private so that should push me up over the thousand followers okay number three i've interacted with them to the point where i'm reasonably sure that they a have made reasonable efforts to understand my arguments and be responsive to them b do not intend to cause me or my community harm i mean fair enough c have made reasonable efforts to reconcile any harm they may have negligently caused me prior. D. Do not have an unhealthy parasocial relationship with me. E. Are not motivated primarily by financial or clout incentive. And F. Are primarily motivated by genuine care for other people. And then she signed, she signed it. <laughs> it's not dated. So I think it's a bit more... Yeah, in chat, in chat, just to be clear, this is from months ago. I just thought it was funny. Riley does not follow Sub 1K Andes. Chud follows me. Seven followers. I think we all know it's truly based here. This is like a manifesto for Twitter followers. For Twitter follows. I don't know. <clears throat> oh, wait. Here's another one. What's this one? What the fuck did you just say about me, you little bitch? I'll have you know I graduated top of my class in the Navy SEALs. And I've been involved in numerous secret raids on Al-Qaeda. And I... <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good i just i just i don't know like i just think that um if if you really like are struggling with like using twitter like it can be really shitty the best thing that you can do because twitter is a terrible platform for like having a conversation anyway right but the best thing that you can do is literally just like limit your posts to putting stuff out there Mute the thread. Don't don't have backwards and forwards with people. Um, you know, only have notifications on from people that that you follow, or just log off for a little bit. I, I don't know. It's just it's yeah. She just takes tw she just takes it all a bit too seriously. But yeah, only have notifications from people you follow because otherwise you're on a hiding to nothing. And also, like um, apparently she was following some like people who 
I don't think you could say a, like Calvin Garra. I don't think is primarily motivated by a genuine care for other people, and apparently she was following um, Calvin Garra after she released this. But I don't know. It's funny as well because li listen, I'm not motivated primarily by financial clout incentive. I'm sorry, but online, I think everyone is motivated motivated by at least a clout incentive to some degree. Um, primarily, maybe not, I guess. But even so, like, there's absolutely um, decisions Riley's made in the course of this, which are motivated primarily by financial or clout incentive. There's no doubt about it. You know, there's no there's no way that you can um, say that, that some of the people she continued to interact with and follow and whatever are primarily motivated by a genuine care for other people. So it's like, well, why, why then? Honestly, like I just hope she manages to sort out whatever's going on. Um, but yeah, I just, I just, I just find a lot of it just to be fucking hilarious, and I like laughing at it. Yeah, just focus on the law stuff, I guess, or something. I don't, I don't know if I don't know how this this space is unironically like super fucking hardcore, like in a lot of ways. Um, like I don't, I don't know if if I mean I don't know if I'd be able to manage. If I was if I was doing some sort of legal thing or something or some sort of course, like I don't, I'd probably have to massively limit all of this this stuff. But I'm not planning on doing that because I'm not a fucking nerd. And as we all know, this is me walking into my uh, local university library. Wow, that's a lot of words. Too bad I'm not reading them. Oh, hey, Dylan, how's it going? We're just having a laugh at some of Riley's legalese bullshit. That's all. Have you fucking had it with this scene? It's so fucking... It's not only toxic, it's embarrassing.